Uh, today we're going to be doing a differential flush on a 1995 Ford F-150 with the 8.8 .8 differential 2.83 um, gear size. This also works on Ford Broncos of the same series as long as you do not have a limited slip differential. The way to figure out limited slip is you track your truck up, take one wheel and you spin it forward. If both wheels spin the same direction in the forward direction you have limited slip and you're going to have to use use um friction modifier because they have friction clutches inside of the differential in my case i have an open differential so i don't have to do that i could just use normal 80w90 then you go underneath the truck and then in front of the differential right by the yoke you're gonna want to go to your fill plug which is right here it's just a normal 3 8 head and you can use a 3 8 3 inch extension on it and just you want to loosen it first and make sure it comes out so now that we're in the back of the differential you're going to want to start removing these bolts these are half inch um, bolts heads um, what I did I put my oil pan in the bottom as you can tell it's it's a bit you know the tight fit so I took the bottom ones off first and now we're going to proceed to remove all of the um, Differential cover bolts except for this one just leave it on a little bit snugged So loosen it all the way and now you're gonna want to take like a prying tool I'm gonna use one of my crappy, you know screwdrivers that's already messed up in a way and You're going to simply just put your screwdriver here somewhere and tap it with a hammer just to break that bond between the old RCV that's on there and Just so we can get the fluid out it will make a mess So just make sure you know you're ready to catch it that's why I'm saying leave this one snug on top. So, get it right here. Try to be careful not to nick the differential housing. But, let's get to it. There we go. Oh, thank gosh. I'm so happy to see the color of that fluid. Tell guys, I got it slightly off. It's gonna, three quarters are gonna come out of here. But if you look at the fluid, it's it looks like gear oil. It's not milky, like one, a couple of my previous vehicles were. It's not metallic-y, so the bearings aren't going bad, so that's a good sign. I'm really happy to see that color and the uh, honey look on that gear oil. So whoever had this truck before me definitely took care of it, and I'm blessed for that. So I'm planning on keeping this truck for a very long time. We got the differential cover removed. We're going to clean that separately outside of the truck and install some RTV, only because this is the longest part right here. You got to make sure that cures properly before adding oil. So I'm going to take it up there, show you guys how to clean this thing, and then, but I wanted to show you guys before, this is, this is me just literally taking off the cover, and just inspecting my spider gear, you know, my ring gears and everything, I see no sign of chunking, I don't see any metal inside the differential, my bearings are over there, they're pretty good, so uh, I'm honestly very happy to see the condition of this, and this thing has 294,000 miles on it very impressed because the last truck I had it had a hundred and I believe it just hit a hundred thousand and the color of the oil was milky this was me prior to off-roading that vehicle and it, it just wasn't taken care of and I am honestly honored to see the condition of this differential the fluid and everything so guys let's get to so it. you're gonna want to take like a gasket remover tool just to get this out of the way like a die grinder or something with a you know emery pad on there just to clean the surface up but since I don't have one and most likely you guys probably won't have one a razor blade will work just fine take it just be careful not to nick the cover and just start cleaning like this literally just clean all right so after you get your differential clean yeah you're gonna see some surface rust coming in but don't worry the gear oil will take care of that um, you clean up the surface really good, you clean the inside of the differential cover just to get all the dirt and everything gone. You don't want to use some ultra black maximum oil resistant gasket maker. When you apply this, you want to do it on the underneath of the bolts, holes, and on the wall. If you do it above here, it's going to leak because all it's going to do is make a gap opening. 
Boop. Boop. So just underneath, very slim, not too thick, just nice layer and smother it with your finger. If you apply that, you're going to want to let it sit for at least half an hour to 45 minutes just so it can cure a little bit better and quicker. The bottom of the truck, you just want to get as much of the RTV out, the old RTV out of the way. And you could take your eraser and do the same thing you did at the top to the bottom. So I wouldn't recommend putting any, you know, type of brake clean or anything in here only because of the, the bearings. But just try to get it as clean as possible by hand. You just do that, you know, try to get all the old oil out of there with just like a normal tissue. You can get your hand in there pretty good. Just see, see how much crud is coming out of there. Well, now it's time to install the differential cover. So after you got your differential cover on, I recommend putting the top one in snugged. Don't tighten it. Put one in the bottom left, the bottom right. And you're gonna to want to put your data tag one back on. All go hand tight. And then just basically hand tight all of them. And you want to do 33 foot pounds on these bolts. You don't want to go too tight. 33 foot pounds is just a normal average ratchet. I have to do it the way I'm doing it, but I'm using a 3/8 ratchet that's gonna tighten these bolts exactly at 33 foot pounds because once it stops, that's it, 33 foot pounds. So what you wanna do is basically start tightening from the top all the way. Boom, right there. You wanna go to the bottom left. Top right. Bottom right. Top left. Bottom right, top left, straight across, and I think I got all of it. But you got the back end in. I recommend you leave it maybe another 20 minutes before continuing to add fluid in, only because you want that RTV to really cure. If not, it will leak. So I'll give it 20 minutes and then we're gonna go fill it up. For my application, one, two, three quarts. And you know you're full when you start seeing some of it coming out like that. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like. Hope this video helped some of you guys out. This is not a how to, this is just an educational how to. Um, anything you do in your vehicle and you take my advice, take it with a grain of salt. I'm just giving you guys advice. So if you guys screw up your vehicle, it's on you guys. All right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like. If you guys enjoyed, please subscribe and help me grow because uh, I'm actually enjoying doing these how-tos for you guys.